Hi everyone, welcome to Imaging Study. Today we are going to see a case of pentalogy of chemtrail. It's not a very common case that you get in your regular practice, but it's worth knowing. A young female patient came with six months of amenorrhea. There was no previous antenatal checkups. Let's see what we have got on ultrasound. Here you can see the cross section of the fetal thoracoabdominal region. You can see a large mass like area floating within the amniotic fluid. This structure is the liver, and these are the small intestinal loops. They're floating within the amniotic fluid. So there is something abnormality going on. You can see the cardiac pulsation, but anterior to the heart, there is anterior thoracic wall defect. This defect is continuous with the abdominal wall defect and all the large organs like liver, intestine, and possibly the part of kidneys are also outside the abdomen. So this is a case of gastroschisis and as you can see the part of heart is seen outside. So from this image it is possibly an ectopia cordis. Here is a glimpse of adrenal gland which is also seen outside. You also can see a hyper echogenic line coming from the uterine wall and attached to the fetal anterior wall. Here is a magnified image and you can see the heart is outside the thoracic cavity. So there is a sternal defect through which it is coming out. And as there is abdominal wall defect, thoracic wall defect, sternal defect, so obviously the diaphragm should not be normal. There should be a diaphragmatic wall defect too. This is the liver. You see this is the umbilical cord vessels inserting laterally. So this is an abdominal wall schisis or commonly we call it gastroschisis. And the heart appearance is called the ectopia cordis. If you find ectopia cortis, there should be some shots of cardiac defects. Here there is a small defect within the interventricular septum. We want to look at it later. Another picture, there is a sagittal section and you can see the heart is herniating outside the thoracic cavity. There is no well-formed diaphragm here. You can see the liver and intestine is also outside the abdomen. This is the adrenal gland. Not well visualized kidneys here, but that should be outside also because the abdominal contents do not show any kidney. Two cystic areas are seen, one might be the urinary bladder. You also can see this hyperechogenic structure. One end is attached to the uterine wall, another end is attached to the cardiac wall or pericardium. From another view, you can see this echogenic line attached to the cardiac wall. This is an amniotic band which is connected here and you also can see this ectopia cordis. Here is a defect in the interventricular septum but it may not be well understandable here on this part. Again, another view of the heart and the herniated liver. Heart contains a tiny interventricular septal defect at this point. In the sagittal section, the nasal region looks quite normal. Anterior abdominal wall and lower thoracic wall defects are well seen here. Now come to another part. This is the spine. You see a very prominent scoliosis. At the lower dorsal region, this part is not normal. There might be a hemivertebra or partially blocked vertebra present here which is causing this type of scoliosis. You also can see the intestinal coils floating within the amniotic fluid. Here's the picture. The fetus had a 24 plus weeks of gestational age. The facial region looks quite normal on three-dimensional ultrasound. 
Here are some pictures. You can see the liver outside the abdomen. And the umbilical cord vessels are inserting here. This is the heart. This is the interventricular septum. And here is a glimpse of the ventricular septal defect. And the picture, the heart and the abdominal contents are outside the body with abdominal wall and lower thoracic wall defect. And you can see this ecogenic linear area. Here is another picture of the heart and this was the ventricular septal defect. It was very difficult to freeze the actual image to show you the ventricular septal defect in this patient. This solid organ is the liver. And the picture of the liver outside the abdomen. Here is another magnified picture. This was the interventricular septum and this was the defect. And that is the ventricular septal defect. This is the aorta. This is the right ventricle. And this is the left ventricle. Here is the ectopia cordis. And you can see this ecogenic linear amniotic band is connected to the anterior part of the heart. Another picture, you can see this amniotic band here. And organs are outside the body cavity. This is the picture of the spine. You can see there is a kyphosis occurring here. This lower dorsal vertebrae don't look normal. So possibly there is a hemivertebra present here or there might be a block vertebra. This is the picture why I'm talking about the block vertebra. These are the tiny spines but here you can see there is a thick area which may be hemivertebra or partially blocked vertebra which is causing the kyphosis. Here is the sagittal section of the facial region which looks quite normal. And here again another poor picture of the fetal heart outside the thorax and the part of the liver and intestine outside the abdomen. So in summary, the fetal lower thoracic and anterior abdominal wall defects are seen along with the sternal and diaphragmatic defects. The heart, liver, intestine and kidneys are noted outside the abdomen. So this is the combination of abdominal wall schisis or commonly known as gastroschisis and ectopia cordis. A small defect is noted within the interventricular septum indicating the ventricular septal defect. An ecogenic linear band is seen attached to the antromargin of the fetal heart or the pericardium. Spinal kyphosis is seen with hemivertebra or blocked vertebra involving the lower dorsal spine. Overall, the bladder, upper and lower limbs and face appear normal during our ultrasound scan. So all of these features suggest it as a case of pentalogy of cantrell. Now the take home message. If you find ectopia cordis with omphalocele or gastroschisis, try to search for other findings to prove it as a case of pentalogy of cantrell. Now a short slide about the pentalogy of cantrell. It is a complex malformation with five classic components. There will be midline abdominal wall defect, lower sternal defect or cleft, anterior diaphragmatic defect, defect of diaphragmatic pericardium, and intracardiac defect. So you'll get a supra umbilical abdominal wall defect. Commonly we see the omphalocele, but it might be abdominal wall schisis or gastroschisis, like in this case. Here we also had a total evisceration of abdominal contents. There will be variable displacement of the heart and mediastinum depending on the severity of the sternal and diaphragmatic defects. Cardiac anomalies are very common. Commonly, you will see atrial or ventricular septal defects. You may also find tetralogy of fallot or Epstein anomaly, or there might be left ventricular diverticulum. Lastly, you may also get pleural or pericardial effusion. We have three different classes of pentalogy of cantrell. Don't make it complicated, it's quite easy to remember. If you get all five defects, it will be class one, like ours. If you get four defects, including intracardiac and ventral wall defect, then you will call it class two. And if there is a sternal defect with various expression of other anomalies, then we'll call it class 3. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel and try to follow us on other social platforms. See you on the next one. Have a nice day.